and welcome back to the first segment of our show this morning where we're going to be having a discussion on the social aspect of crime and violence in the country. That being said, we have been joined on set by three persons. We have with us social work instructor at the University of Belize, Fermin Oliveira. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. We also have Leah Cambranes. She's a criminal justice student at Galen University, as well as Bernard Pitts. He's also a criminal justice student at Galen. Good morning, guys. Hi, good, morning. good morning. So we're mixing it up this morning. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But, you know, I think it's, it's such a great opportunity, I think, to broaden the conversation. Mm -hmm. We talk about crime, Furman, you know this, uh, quite often with police, uh, with educators, uh, with uh, attorneys. And now we get to really focus on what I think we don't fit into the conversation, which is the social aspect of yeah. it. Um, and, and so let's, let's use a, a starting point as to what triggered you two to move into this particular course of study in the first place. You're both three years in. Yeah. yeah. So something had to happen for you to say, this is where I want to focus my attention. Well, for me in particular, um, I've had some unfortunate instances, mm -hmm. um, family members, friends. However, um, given the fact that the, the, the crime rate has been I would say steady. Um, there's cry for help. Mm -hmm. There's cry for improvement. And there's no real conversation other than perhaps maybe some heaviness from the police. Mm -hmm. It still does not help the issue. So from, I would say, our standpoint at this course from Galen, yeah. which is quite excellent, we look at rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the key aspects of you know what should be our conversation mm -hmm. we can't just you know you do your crime you spend your time and forget about you you're a human being mm -hmm. and we have to take into consideration what next after mm -hmm. Is and it a that part of rehabilitation mm -hmm. does fit into the cycle to mm -hmm. you know break it is it that our society in a sense is so unforgiving so that instead of we look at rehabilitation we simply write people off who have fallen victims of the system or who, who or who have purposely placed themselves in that particular situation i would say 80 percent we are unforgiving mm -hmm. because we are fed up <coughs> with crime mm -hmm. and if we look at the statistics if we look at groups individuals we know that they are purposely committed, if you want to say, for a living, for some shortfall that you want. It's done, and it's based on your individual decision. And so the, the, the public has no um, love for that. Mm -hmm. They are quite fed up. Mm -hmm. And so we find that when you look at social media, into, in particular to crimes and so on, mm -hmm. you, if you read the comments, you'd see how crude some of them are. Mm -hmm. So you know that, you know, the public is not um, forgiving. However, we simply just write off the other aspect of it, which is very important, and that's the human aspect. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that comes with rehabilitation. Leah, are you from Belize City? No, I'm from, I'm actually from San Ignacio, born and raised there. And okay. I actually agree with Bernard as well. Um, I think that it's very important for us to focus on rehabilitation and I don't think that it's something that is very prevalent in our culture. It's not a, a topic that's up for discussion. When mm -hmm. people hear rehabilitation, it's something that is completely out of the norm and I think that that's something very unique about our Galen education, our degree in criminal justice because not only do we learn that as people, as as people in our society, as Belizeans, that we have to understand how did this person that has committed this crime gotten to the place that they are? And something that we really focus on, and I know that Bernard remembers one of our professors mentioning this, and it's, it has stuck with me throughout my three years of studies, is that hurt people hurt, hurt people. People, a lot of people that commit these crimes, they have been through traumatic experiences, and how do we as a society 
just help these people and what comes after is very important. So I think that rehabilitation is a very important as aspect of our society that we should be exploring and mm -hmm. I think you three, three of you bring very different mm -hmm. ex uh, experiences or perspectives because uh, Farmin, we know not only are you a social uh, social work instructor, you've worked with community in rehabilitation field, yeah, for mm -hmm. uh, center for many years, which is the young at-risk right, population mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. children who come in conflict, conflict with, with the, the law. law. Mm -hmm. As a San Ignacio resident, we found more and more that people living outside of Belize City view the problem a lot differently mm. than those who live in Belize City itself. So Bernard was very clear in saying, and we were talking about this last week, about the level of crime. And sometimes we really get caught up in the one murder more, two murder less, yeah. uh, rather than just looking at what has been an increase and a steady increase. Um, when you look at the situation, what do you think is missing from the conversation? Let's start with you. Well, well, yeah, I think um, I think lots of s some great ideas have been shared here by these uh, two students um, and and uh, commendations to the program to mm -hmm. Galen for, for offering this program. Clearly, they're responding to 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 an important need here in Belize. Um, I don't know if it's missing, if, if I think about that, but I think the, the, the capacity, I think yeah. about the, the level of intervention, I think they talked about rehabilitation, mm -hmm. and we can see rehabilitation at different levels, for example, at the individual level, that person that maybe committed a crime, went into some kind of a care or prison, something happened, you're hoping that they will come out and not offend again. That's one level of rehabilitation. I think the piece that we are missing is the one that is woven in the fabric of our society, the one that, that is generating these, these persons, persons who are disconnected, who have very loose uh, values. Um, we can ask ourselves the question, why, what about those that are not committing crime? Th that's an important question. Yeah. What happens to them why they are not committing yeah. crime? And then you can look to those that are committing crime, what are they fighting for? Or what is it that they want? So now this doesn't just happen like I in a vacuum. This mm -hmm. happens within the social fabric of Belize. Yeah. You know, um, so I think the way we, we, we are, may, for whatever reasons, uh, a very cruel and, and, and unforgiving and, and punitive society. Um, so people, um, in my thinking, people resort to these kinds of behavior when something has been missing. Now that is what we haven't done enough. Mm -hmm. For example, I think people must have a sense of, of feeling successful, of, of feeling loved, of feeling mm -hmm. good at something. Mm -hmm. Now academics might not be, we can see little PSE scores, and so we haven't been do doing great mm -hmm. as, a, as a small country. So if you are at the margins of, of say that school system where you are not doing well, and, and nothing else is there, sports or arts or nothing, then that will contribute to your sense of self. And, and I think that's the part that is missing. We are not doing enough to acculturate mm -hmm. and to, to, to promote our culture. Yeah. Um, um, you know, I, I have been reflecting on this for some time now, you know, the, the, the notion that we live in a good country. You know, can we really soberly ask ourselves that question? Is Belize still that good country? W how has our culture and societies changed? You know? yeah. So I think that's where something is missing big pieces are missing that that you know that is an interesting case study because we say this time and time again if you were to use the very uh, the stereotype that is commonly um, referred to for people who are perpetrating violent crime mm -hmm. it's usually a south side area but there are many people who mm -hmm. are productive who yeah. are of the very same demographic of the criminals that we see or the killers that we see very commonly being taken to court so that is a very good question to ask ourselves. What's the difference? And um, what I want to ask is, how much does parenting and support play a role? I would gladly have them. But let me quickly quickly just share. I mean, they're fresh. They're hearing all this. But yeah. listen, the first place where people learn socialization mm -hmm. is the family. We mm -hmm. can't get away mm -hmm. from that. There are yeah. actually theories built around people's experience it within that s little system, that micro system. And um, the families make no mistake, 
influence who we are, how we think, and yeah. maybe what we become, uh, largely. So families that, that are protective, that offer uh, nurturance, and, and these kinds of things form. Th we, we can't get away from that reality. Um, but if we are disconnected as a people, if we are not <coughs> sure if you're Creole, or, or maybe, we, we, maybe there is a new cultural mix, mm -hmm. but people must be grounded on self and be proud of that and see themselves when like in the mirror in the rest of society mm -hmm. as a valued important part of our mm -hmm. society then you have something good but if when you see yourself in the mirror culture or otherwise and you see something that doesn't match up then 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 you hurt people hurt people yeah. that's what it is it, it, it starts there so families are, are, are big uh, important yeah. factors the health of the family is is tremendous into forming some of this. But we're, we're in a time where people are growing up in broken homes and that sort of stuff. And that, that is the reality at present, we would agree, correct? Yeah. That it's prevalent, mm -hmm. that children are growing up where they don't have both parents in the same household, and so that their influences come from outside as opposed to from within. You can't tell a young man not to do this or not to do that if perhaps the mother doesn't have that sense of communication or closeness with him, vice versa. So that perhaps the individual hangs around his friends and they are the ones who kind of teach him in a manner of speaking how to become a man from their yeah. point of view. And so that society, if you, if you ask me, we look at that particular situation and, and society sort of just turns its back to that. But that is the root of where, to me, all of these things, these things happen. The crime and violence takes root in those particular circles, the very ones that are overlooked. When you look at the courses that you guys are taking, for instance, do you look at that particular aspect of it? The, the fact that you have young men and women who are growing up in families that aren't completely together? Yes, we actually do. There's actually this course that we've taken together mm -hmm. that's called um, Gender Issues and Violence. In, in society and we learn that growing up as a child your experiences mold you and mm -hmm. it's very important to have a good relationship or a relationship that exists at all with with your parents so um, that really affects who you become and it also molds your identity as you were talking about mm -hmm. it's really hard for us in especially when you're at a young vulnerable age and you're in your let's say your teenage years years it's very hard for us to find who we are and having a parent or having a loved one help us on that journey is very very vital to our personal development and our development just as a citizen as a person mm -hmm. as and it helps with in becoming a good person so i do believe that a lot of um people that that participate in violence they have been have suffered some type of traumatic experience in the past that has fueled them to act like this i'm not saying that it's everyone because there are people that do not fall into that category mm -hmm. but your experiences as at home do mold you into the person that you become in your society and it's very vital for you to have some type of influence that that just leads you on the right path but um I'm pretty sure that there are some people that do, that are raised in single mother homes that do become successful, but it's very hard for them because there's double the amount of pressure. You're living in a, in a fatherless home and you have to, your mother is the only one fending for you and you're several siblings. So it's very hard for you to stay on track and not do wrong. And I think that's the issue in our society that I think that mothers a lot of single mothers have a great responsibility and it's yeah. very mm -hmm. you know hard to give attention to four children and it's very difficult yeah. so i i really do believe that that um those are some of the root issues yeah. mm -hmm. occurrences that happen in your childhood really really mold who you are and you know this is the challenge of having this conversation yeah. there are mm -hmm. so many different aspects that we can focus on if we look at the root issues we know that it's predominant uh we, we can talk about the poverty and it's not just belize city it's widespread we can talk about challenges within the families 
Uh, we can talk about opportunities for work, for people to get ahead. Um, and now we add to that the very same layer of the impact of crime and violence on our society. Mm. So, <clears throat> but I, I wanted to shift because you started with something that I think is so important and I don't want to lose sight of it. Your biggest issue, your way that you see a, a best solution is focusing on rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. But to get to rehabilitation, we need to find the criminals, charge the criminals, and well, put them in some sort of system. So can you maybe just explain this further to me? How do you see rehabilitation as a way out if we just have people roaming around well, and they haven't been charged? Rehabilitation comes from a multifaceted angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it involves everything you want to think about. First of all, look at the social offices mm -hmm. that offer services. How many of them are connected mm -hmm. that speak to each other? Mm -hmm. That's from one angle. Like you mean your social services, your human development? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Women's department. Okay. How many of them are actually communicating? Because yeah. there's a saying, it takes a community to raise a child. Mm -hmm. yeah. And really and truly, our community is our social services mm -hmm. because as individuals we live in a bubble with our families mm -hmm. so we're not interested about anybody else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anybody else they have to go through social services so mm -hmm. you want to take from that aspect the next aspect that we have discussed um, while we're coming down is the fact that we need to see our judicial mm -hmm. our executive mm -hmm. and our legislative body communicate in a sense that guess what you're not just sent to court for a punishment, mm -hmm. but something is mandated by law to ensure mm -hmm. that some program is in place yeah. that you will enter mm -hmm. to not have recidivism. Mm -hmm. And that's re-entering back into the yeah. system. If you look at Colby, they have a program there, but what happens when your time is done, you're through that program? The hardest thing for you to do is get employed. Yeah. Why? Because, because most police business record. places mm -hmm. require a police, a police record. record. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, you want to know who you're employing, but guess what? You take away from that person mm -hmm. when they are not hired. And so, why we want to focus on rehabilitation is because when you're out from Colby, mm -hmm. you want to be able to reintegrate to a normal life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're turned away from services, mm -hmm. what will you do next? Well, it forces you to go back. Yeah. Exactly. To your so old life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Having mm -hmm. something, having a program mandated that you will go through mm -hmm. at least is a further extension to show that you can't just blame government now. Mm -hmm. You can't just blame the higher-ups. You have to put yourself in a position to do so. So you enable the environment for you to put yourself in. The, the, the government will enable the environment for you to put yourselves in. And I'm certain there will be some positive outcomes from that. Mm -hmm. um, we visited the Colby Foundation on several occasions mm -hmm. and the conversations that we have there. You realize mm -hmm. that while they have learned a skill, they want more after that. Mm -hmm. They don't want to just, all right, I serve my time. What am I going to do next? I have a family. I have myself to take care mm -hmm. of. What am I going to do? What is there? Mm -hmm. You see? And that is the question or the picture that we have been missing as a part of rehab. Yeah. So then it goes back to my initial question to say that perhaps as a society we are unforgiving. Because yeah. while these persons have paid their so-called debt to society, by, by serving their time and what have you, the moment they come back and we're expecting them to reintegrate successfully, but at the same time we're turning our backs by not giving them jobs, by looking at them and treating them differently, and we're forcing them back to square one. There's a balancing in all of that mm -hmm. before the end product. Mm -hmm. For example, you don't apply the law on discretion. I mm -hmm. believe justice is blind, so you must apply it across the mm -hmm. board. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you notice currently, in, especially in social media, there's so many young women coming out in regards to domestic violence yeah. mm -hmm. and so on. And if you look at how some cases are treated, 
it's not balanced, you know. And so you will find that some people remain sulking, you know, and that's a part of what triggers some reaction to, you know, what, guess what? There's a way we can get around the law, mm -hmm. you know. But if you balance it, it fits into the rehab process because, you know what, you will not get away. You must be in this program. Yeah. Whether you've been in a domestic situation, whether it was for um, theft, yeah. burglary, something, you must mm -hmm. go through a program to get some kind of change. And our culture here in Belize, like I said before, we live in a bubble just mm -hmm. for surviving. Yeah. Yeah. We don't care about each well, other. And, and, and there are several thoughts that you've triggered in what you've said. First of all, though, do we have halfway houses? That, that kind of intermediary? Minimal. Still yeah. Minimally. Uh, Is uh, it? You know, even when we had, we didn't have enough and they were really not functioning the, mm -hmm. the way, way they, they should mm -hmm. have been. Is even that a when potential area that can help with that yeah, to buffer course. the reintroduction uh, back to society? In the, in the, in the criminal justice system that mm -hmm. coming out from prisons and so I mean and this is this is a hundred years old mm -hmm. idea mm -hmm. that you have transition homes to help people reintegrate mm -hmm. a little bit to help them with job mm -hmm. guide them those kinds of things remember lots of people coming from institutions like prison mm -hmm. also probably part of what got them in there was substance abuse some kind of drug yeah. or so so mm -hmm. that needs time yeah you know, rehabilitation, I think one of the drawbacks to the idea of rehabilitation, it, it, it takes time. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you just fix it like thing. a TV or yeah. radio. People mm -hmm. are more complex than that, you know, and mm -hmm. you, you want to put in systems to help them cope along. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's these little things that are old ideas that serve good purposes yeah. that are lacking. So, you know, s services like that, of course, those are, those are good things. Then. I like to think about the about what needs to change. We need mm -hmm. to change the way we, we think about things and have thought about things. Yeah. Um, traditionally, for example, as it relates to domestic violence. I think we need to be thinking, you know, we have these ideas that relationships are forever. Relationships yeah. mm -hmm. are not forever. Mm -hmm. However, what must not be part of that e equation is the violence. And we have seen mm -hmm. where uh, home murders m mur of women, which mm -hmm. is, travesty this day and age um, uh, and, it, and that's that's gender that's a gender, gender uh, mm -hmm. situation there where where people where men might think that they own this is possession and if you're not mm -hmm. with me you're with those kinds of thinking really reflective of very I would even say primitive because primitive is a good thing you yeah. know we, we, we like to don't play that but uh, we can learn a lot it's about respecting it's about it's about respect for each other people go their separate ways it doesn't need to be vile and venomous and, 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 and violent and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's an extension, that's a reflection of the depravity of, yeah. of our thinking. If, if people decide to go their ways, for whichever reason, mm -hmm. it must not be accompanied with violence. You know, it's, it's funny because um, we have the Domestic Violence Unit, mm -hmm. we have the Domestic Violence Act, but how much of it do we put into play? How much mm -hmm. of do we actually follow up? Yeah. I mean to say that, for example, a spouse may call and you know they have some issue home. What is the action that is taken yeah. by the police? Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen so many cases of abuse. I mean, mm -hmm. physical abuse, mm -hmm. and a week, two, three months later, the women or so Return. are back in the house. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it because they're dependent? Mm -hmm. Is it because of love, their children, what have you? But you find that not much women know mm -hmm. that there are services yeah. that they can access. Mm -hmm. How many of them know of the protective order? Mm -hmm. How many of them know that um, they suffer economic abuse? Mm -hmm. You see? And there are those um, programs that you can yeah. access. Yeah. to get those information and I think a part of it is that some women are afraid mm -hmm. to speak up mm -hmm. um, the lack of I would say full support that's needed for domestic violence mm -hmm. it's too prevalent now mm -hmm. and, and having people understand the cycle of it exactly. that's why we mm -hmm. use that word the, this cycle just of imagine domestic violence. Mm -hmm. you have your young children and every so often there's a quarrel or a 
right. Yeah. yeah. They're noticing. They're yeah. developing. Yep. It's being put mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. their yeah, fiber. Yeah. So yeah. when they're placed in a similar position, That's perhaps at an older age, mm -hmm. this is how they may react. Mm -hmm. So while I say support services, we need to put them into effect. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to perhaps maybe put more strong arms in terms of, guess what? You're the abuser of this home. Mm -hmm. You're affecting the children, the women. These are what we will exercise, meaning you will provide for your family. You may need to leave the home. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that is where we are not educating perhaps enough yeah. with, the, with women because, you know, they can take those steps. Mm. Yeah. I would like to take it one step before that, before going to those legal mechanisms, which is absolutely yeah. right. It's the family. The family must be the first buffer mm -hmm. to help a woman or, or a member that is in need like that. And, and so often, unfortunately, you see that not working very well for uh, a number of reasons. But we need to move away from the idea that it's acceptable to treat with any woman or, or in, in, those, in that kind of a way. Mm -hmm. you know, um, and we need to have zero tolerance with that. He's absolutely right. Many times people, and I have seen it, are wrong, um, where there is a dispute or, or, or a problem, and the, the man, because of his authority and stuff, can literally kick the woman out of the house. Mm -hmm. And the woman has to, you know, with children and stuff like that. Clearly, that there is need for more protection. That is, that is uncalled for. That is, that is um, maybe the worst things that, that, that we as human beings can do, you yeah. know, to, you know, I don't know how, how that works out, but it's, it's, it's unacceptable. Let me tell you yeah. some things. If there's something that I have learned from our courses at Galen, especially the gender ones, it's not just the home, but it's what happens in the home. It's how you mm -hmm. raise your children. The, this issue with domestic violence, it's something that's culturally engraved in our society because what do you learn as a woman in your home when you're growing up? Mm -hmm. we, are li we live in a society where women are very submissive to men mm -hmm. and men, it's a very like machismo-like society. Yeah. The men yeah. are the head of the family. They're the primary breadwinners. Yeah. So what does the woman do? As a female growing up in your society, what do you do for your father? Mm -hmm. What does your mother, what do your mother and your father demand of you? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like you have to cook and you have to, you have to clean. Terrible. So yeah. what do you learn as a young, young daughter, as a, as a female in your home to be submissive to the male? So that not only affects you in your childhood, your personal development, but it transcends into your adulthood. And this is why a lot of women also, who also do not receive a lot of educational support yeah. when they are young girls. That's why it's hard for them to break out of this cycle because this is what they have grown up in. I'm not saying that it's not completely impossible for you to break this cycle, yeah. but a lot of women need to become more independent and invest in themselves yeah. instead of you know, getting into these abusive relationships. Right. But Absolutely. what have you learned to do as a child? Yeah. And what have you seen your mother tolerating? Yeah. But and and that's a change in the thinking, too, though. Because that's I a always change find the necessary. conversation, and we've moved from criminal violence honing in on, on mm -hmm. but it, it, violence is violence. Let's yeah. let's not forget this is the same Actually, conversation. There's a there's this position I take. Uh -huh. You must never hit someone. Yeah, never. Yeah. Well, see, thank you. On Can I use that as as a segue to my question? Because I think what we're talking about here is persons who feel it's okay to respond in a violent manner whether in a relationship mm -hmm. or in a social issue that we're having or in some kind of even a friendship. Uh, when you talk about gangs, it's the same thing. It's, it's a conflict mm -hmm. that takes place and I respond in a violent manner. More often shooting in a domestic violence, um, in a relationship itself, I respond by hurting my partner. Mm -hmm. So it seems that we're doing something to have a very large, well, I don't wanna say very large, but we're, having, we're, we're doing something to have a population of people feel that it's okay to hurt another person because mm -hmm. they've hurt me or I feel that they've hurt me. It's a personal decision I think any person takes mm -hmm. to hit or strike another 
whether with a weapon or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My firm belief is this. Unless your back is against the proverbial walls, mm -hmm. you don't need to strike. Mm -hmm. You know, and even if you're against the proverbial walls, it's my life or theirs, but yeah. it's because you don't want to do so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you're not against the proverbial walls, then you have to look at it from an individual perspective. That's a choice you're making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you made that choice, there are ramifications for it. Mm -hmm. And we have to study that process. Okay, why am I in this position? It's because of something I've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what have led me to that lack of education, lack of family, lack of support, mm -hmm. lack of shelter, lack of food, resources, mm -hmm. what have you. But at the end of the day, you made an individual decision mm -hmm. to hurt or hit someone. And we cannot just turn a blind eye to that. Yeah. We cannot. Because it can't be that everyone is walking around so angry that they need to react with mm -hmm. violence. Yeah. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to put our community or country in purge? No. Mm -hmm. We and have to. Uh, and you know what? You know? I think he's absolutely right in that um, um, the, 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 the choice to use violence or not. But I want to tell you that's exactly what it is. I think we have too many people that are very angry, very disconnected, that violence is like the first thing that they resort to mm -hmm. when there is conflict. Yeah. You know, um, but, but we must, at every level, to try to discourage acts of violence towards one another. He's, he's absolutely right in, in that thing. I, um, you know, I think um, the... I mean, what could be, we see the manifestation of violence too much. Yeah. We get numb to it. It's like you, 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 you wonder why, but, but hitting, you know, there was once a big deal there with uh, hitting kids, hitting, yeah. you know, it I still always, is, by it the still way. is. Yeah. And I tell my students, um, and, and uh, this is what I have seen, when you hit children, I mean, think about why you do it. Many times you do it because it's your own fault. Mm -hmm. it's the kid messed up because it was your fault as the parent. So you hit on the child. And you hit the child because it's easy to do. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, you don't have to be no brilliant person to hit a child. You don't have to teach a lesson, any, you just stop the behavior. Right. So you, you, we use hitting for every wrong reason mm -hmm. most of the time. Now, I will not go on that side to say, um, my God, you do a little spanking or a little something. You know what? People, I still think, must be empowered to raise their kids. Yeah. But as a general rule, when you hit people, when you hit kids, you're hitting their little intelligence out of mm -hmm. them. You're, you're molding them to submit. That's the change in thinking yeah. that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We need to revisit what we do. Because yeah. lots of times the things we have been doing have not worked for us yeah. lately. The I'm so you, you, glad you said that because I was going to push the envelope there because I feel that we don't tie all these behaviors together. Yeah. And while many people will jump up right now at their television, we know it's happening and think, don't tell us you can't spank <laughs> our child because I turned out okay. Uh, <laughs> for such a that. passive society, <laughs> we got to check ourselves. But what is the lesson we teach children when you do something bad or do something wrong? And your, be, your response to that as a person in authority is violence. Because mm -hmm. what is spanking or pinching or hurting a child other than Arm. just inflicting is, violence or pain upon them? So the problem is this. If you're going to punish a child or someone, you need to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Explain you to don't just went wrong. punish the child. Mm -hmm. I'll give you my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was, n the, the rod was never spared with me because mm -hmm. I was mischievous. <laughs> and I grew up in the neighborhood mm -hmm. that is not forgiving. Mm -hmm. I woke up hearing, um, seeing, smelling, violence drugs, what have you. But I had parenting. Mm -hmm. I was mischievous. The rod was never spared. But whenever I was punished, it was because of something I did, mm -hmm. but I was explained to why I was mm -hmm. being punished. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not because of 
lack of love or authority over me, but it's because you need to learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. I can tell you to this day, if I am about to do something mischievous or even funny, mm -hmm. I'm hearing my mother's voice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The because, lesson that she taught you. You know? Yeah. Bernard, um, uh huh. Ma, uh, okay. Yeah, what do you want? Make her just relax. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for me, that is perhaps why, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just not supporting of any sort of violence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because I know what it can do. Mm -hmm. If you keep beating a child, beating a child, that's what he or she will learn <coughs> and know and yeah. someday react. Yeah. And, and you know, there, there I was reading a little piece of literature which speaks to that law. And I just looked at it. I was just reading. Yeah. And it, it, it was a study done on, on hitting on, on young people and children mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And the, the results seem, what, what really impacts the child yeah. is not so much the hitting, yeah. it's not knowing why. Why, yeah. 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 That, that, is, that is internalized in such a way that angers the person, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. knowing why. Yeah. And you know what, in the years of, of wor working with kids in conflict with the law, the punishment, if it if it merited the action, they're mm -hmm. okay with it, you know. Yeah. It's the sense of injustice. Yeah. It's you know what this has gone too far. I no merit this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a fundamental. I way didn't even get yeah. to explain myself, yeah. which we know right. as kids, you weren't allowed to say I yeah. I did didn't or this is why, why I did yeah. it. Yeah. And so you know, and to be very clear, when you're talking about not hitting children, it's not about not punishing children Absolutely and you touch on something so important yeah. it's teaching the child who will eventually become become an adult and the, the issue of consequences without and come with consequences yeah but without bringing in the violence into yeah. their lives yeah. because that is where the violence begins from your child yeah. and if you see violence in your home it is very likely that you will it's become a very angry person and in, in the future, you will express yourself very violently. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think that as kids and as human beings, we are supposed to be held accountable. Yeah. But violence is never the answer. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary. Yeah. You know, for a young child, and I think parents need to know this, for a young child, there is no one more important than them. That it's innate, it's, it, it's a part of the child's development that yeah. to please their parents is supreme to anything else. Mm -hmm. But so that the parent can use that knowledge to, by the look, by the way that you're displeasing mommy or daddy, that child will stop. Mm -hmm. But that is so marred and ruined very early because mm -hmm. the levels of discipline we use just literally is destroying that child's sense of self and sense. People really grow up probably hating their, their parents. Mm -hmm. Part of it's why, why, did, why, why have I gone through all this? why yeah you know yeah. so we, we ruin opportunities to bring correction and stuff and and unfortunately we are we are not in a good place socially yeah it, the, the levels of crime yeah. uh, and, and this is maybe not true at Belize but uh, in this in the in this in the in Belize city mm -hmm. you know we, we have to be thinking you know we have been to rethink uh, our ways of how we want to address these things and yeah. these this this needs to happen yesterday yeah. you know and we got to we got to talk about some of the lessons or some of the things that we witness as everyday citizens and the impact it has on crime. Mm -hmm. But that's gonna be when we come back. We'll talk, we have the image up of the, the police brutality. We've been talking more about uh, the political influence on crime and gangs. And there's a lot more to discuss about this issue when we come back, but we gotta take a quick break. So please stay tuned. Mm -hmm. What do you want from your bank? I want to know that my bank will teach me how to save. I want to know that my bank can help to make my dream of owning a home a reality. I want to know that my bank will help me grow my business and build Belize. I want to know that my bank will keep my investment safe. Whether you want to start a savings plan, 
build your own home, invest in your business or plan for retirement, the Belize Bank is here for you. The Belize Bank. Our country, your bank. Yes, and I can use this to vote in any election or referendum. But Ma, the lady said on the radio and television that if you have not re-registered, you can still go to the election and boundary registration office to register. I also heard her say that if you're not registered, you can't vote in any election or referendum. Ma, let's go! So that you can register and vote in any election. Requirements for registration. Remember, persons who are 18 years of age or over is a citizen of Belize, a citizen of any Commonwealth country who has ordinarily resided in Belize for 12 consecutive months and resident in the electoral division for not less than two months qualify to register. You have a civic responsibility to register and vote. Register today. Your right to vote depends on it. A message from the Elections and Boundaries Department. When someone you love becomes a memory, the memory becomes a treasure. Channel 5 introduces the Daily Obituaries. The Daily Obituaries will broadcast all death and funeral announcements and memorials to honor your loved one's life and memories. The Daily Obituaries airs on Channel 5 prior to the evening newscast with subsequent repeats at 10 p.m. and 12 noon the following day. It will also be placed online on our social media platforms, all for a standard package fee. Celebrate their lives and memories with Channel 5's daily obituaries. Honor in life and reverence in death. We are continuing our conversation this morning on crime and violence in our societies. And this time we're, we're tackling it from the social perspective. Mm -hmm. We have two young students uh, from Gillen University studying criminal justice. And we have a social work instructor at the University of Belize, Fermin Oliveira. And uh, of course, Fermin also has extensive uh, experience in working in rehabilitation with young at risk uh, persons. So. Before we close off the last conversation, we were talking about what feels like a grave injustice in our society. And, it, you know, <clears throat> we've said many times in this conversation that crime is multifaceted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many different aspects that we can talk about, that we have been talking about, mm -hmm. and how it ties in overall to the problems that we're seeing. Of recent, we're looking at the issue of police brutality. And I, and I think it's very important we fit this into the conversation because when you talk about injustices, um, it does include the treatment that some people suffer at the hands of the police department. Not all police officers misbehave, yeah. but some do. And when it's documented like this, it really sends the wrong message to the wider society. The criminal, the, the, the judiciary itself, where people are walk away scot-free from crimes sometimes that people or family members really feel or know mm -hmm. that they have the right person there and then you have the influence where sometimes gang members or gang leaders are glorified in our society they're allies of politicians who can forget that they sat down with the prime minister of this country at one point in time and they have been continuously uh, made to be seen as, as prominent within society as a leader of a criminal entity. So I want to talk about how all this ties into our psyche in looking at injustice and how it ties into crime. Let, let me quickly take a, 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 a just a minute to give these two young persons a little advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are getting into a field very dynamic, very important, and I, and I really want to wish them every success. Yeah, thank you. I want to caution them very strongly. 
to be sure to safeguard your professional integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you compromise that by some act of corruption, mm -hmm. taking money <laughs> with your partners and colleagues, you have limited your ability, your capacity to be an effective leader in bringing change. I often tell that to people that in, in these areas because unfortunately some of you know we, we limit ourselves sometimes you wonder why is it that more is not done mm -hmm. more is not done because people have skeletons together if you cripple one you cripple the other you know many times in these types of high-risk job uh, um, high-stress jobs you know and hard times it's difficult to stay on the narrow and straight path but I just want to say many times what we see our inability to solve crime is because the powers that be are intimate in the corruption and collusion to wrongdoing they don't want to expose themselves they don't want to expose so you you have to limit it you have to cover up many times because you have just gone into so I'll just take a minute to tell them that yeah. and to whoever is listening to us you know, that's why we see many impotent leaders because mm -hmm. down the road, there is a history that limits their, their integrity to, to do certain things. And no matter what they tell you, yeah. squeaky clean this, that, that, mm -hmm. it's not. Their ha hands are tainted with blood and wrongdoing. I think that it also has to do with the person. You have to be, to be in, this, in this field, you have to be a very selfless person and it's very risky, so you have to it has to be something that you really want. And um, along with that, I also believe that you have to be someone that wants to, to impact your society, to create a change, to help people. So it's not just about, it's actually not all at, about personal gain or recognition or any of those things. There has to be someone, there has to be a collective group of us, a unified group that, that wants to make a change in yeah. our country. And it starts with just one person. It starts with the influence that you make in your society, the influence that you have on your siblings, on your parents, the your education that you receive. It's not something that you're supposed to keep to yourself. It's something that you share with everyone. You enlighten. When you're enlightened, you enlighten everyone, even if it's on a topic that someone's not even really interested but you have to be someone that is very selfless you share you're not all about personal gain and greed and that's something that we have to learn as a culture as well so if let me ask and this. understanding that integrity is priceless exactly integrity can never be mm -hmm. replaced I, I do want to get a question an answer here from bernard we know you have a personal experience in terms of looking at injustices and so just understanding how this all fits into the perspective here well for me, before I share my personal experience, when you're placed in a position mm -hmm. to execute certain functions, especially within the law, there should be no discretion. Mm -hmm. Because when you bend and bow to favor one or the other, it will only put you in a position to continue mm -hmm. to do that. So it does not serve or help the purpose you have been placed there for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it makes you not only compromise, but it gives the appearance of corruption. Mm -hmm. It may not be corruption, but because you have used discretion, you have created that um, avenue for continued favors. Mm -hmm. And when you have favors, particularly within, I would say maybe criminal elements, they are the yeah, ones who, who will be outsmarting mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this, and you guys can check back in your news feed and media. Um, before this person was, uh, I think, killed by police in exchange of fire, on so many occasions, the person was held for gun possession and ammunition. Mm -hmm. How is it that he's always, the person is always granted bail? out and you know mm -hmm. he's a menace to society what are our persons in place doing to deal with issues like those you know when I look at somebody in position to help a situation and you give that favor for a blind because the 
it's either some sympathy or fear, mm -hmm. then I lose respect for you. Mm -hmm. It means then I am at risk. Yes. Because if that person does yeah. something against me, then mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. already I, know I have, you know, yeah. some sway against me. Mm -hmm. My personal um, experience was that 12 years ago, as I said earlier, mm -hmm. my brother was murdered. Um, to all the persons and family who knew my brother, um, he was very selfless. If you're his friend and you were punctured in PG, if you call him, if he has mm -hmm. the means or access, he will get there to help you. Mm -hmm. So when he was murdered, um, it took a lot out of me because he was the person I play with a lot, mm -hmm. the person I laugh with, dance with a lot, because he was that type of person. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the information surrounding his murder, we uncovered, not with the help of the police, so to speak, but the fact that we were able to find information, we were able to see a video, you know, and it has taken a toll on our family because the persons walked free mm -hmm. because there were not enough evidence to pursue the matter. They enter a nolly process, the persons walked. Mm -hmm. And you know, it kind of crushed us, but from my standpoint, and why I've said earlier, Galen had broken my code is because I didn't focus on the offender because they were no longer my interests. Mm -hmm. I focused on me, on my family. What are we doing mm -hmm. for the victims? Are we going to stay mad, angry at the just the system, at the persons, at what? What do we do? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I focus differently. At the end of the day, we, we pray, mm -hmm. we ask for peace, we ask for guidance. And we say, we comfort ourselves saying that, you know what? God will provide and perhaps there will be some karma. Mm -hmm. You know, it does happen. Can't say it's coincidence or not, but mm -hmm. if we believe in a super being, we, we, we will heal. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of my family healing. That's a part of my personal healing. And I say this because I've been in proximity like this mm -hmm. with the chief offender. And I realized that, you know what? It makes me absolutely no better mm -hmm. to feel angry or even afraid, you see? Mm -hmm. And so it's the inner thoughts mm -hmm. that have derived from my Galen program that tells me we can't just focus on the offender, what we want to lock them up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really help because they will come out, they were an offender. They're still an offender, but what have we done? Let me ask you this, we, Bernard. Hold on, we miss an important aspect, what have we done for the victims if they survive? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see, it's a part of the oh, cycle. It's, it's a part of the family because families grieve. Even It's even worse when it's a family member a part of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You see? And so we have to be very keen. We have to be very insightful on these things. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. You're both students. You've shared a personal experience with us. Um, what will be the outcome of your education process in criminal justice and how do you plan to apply that to be able to make a difference know, knowing that you have this knowledge and this, this wealth of experience? Well, I believe we have been challenged already by our lecturers, mm -hmm. especially um, our learned Judge Moore and um, Ms. Kendra Hoyt, mm -hmm. that because we're, I would want to say, perhaps pioneers, Mm -hmm. right now, we ought to come up with some program. Solution. Some solution. Mm -hmm. Besides that, preceding that, it's ourselves. Mm -hmm. And for me, for one, I, I, I have, I am strictly non-violent. So that will make, for me, mm -hmm. a good input into a program because mm -hmm. I will be looking at victims. Mm -hmm. I want to look at offenders. I want to look at rehabilitation. It's, a, it's complex. Earlier I said it's multifaceted. And mm -hmm. it's not just by us. Mm -hmm. We need to include everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. It includes, as I said before, we need to ensure or try to make a move that the judicial, the legislative and the executive bodies, mm -hmm. they look at a solution. They try mm -hmm. to move somewhere, not just say, we're here to execute our jobs and that's it. No. Look at the end results. Look at how you can make that change within the community to make people feel safe, mm -hmm. to ensure that, guess what? Victims are not lost. Mm -hmm. Offenders are not lost. But when you apply the services, especially the law and justice, it's balanced. I, I love the, the, the breath of fresh air that young people bring yeah. to you know, th this perspective, that idealistic. That's a wonderful thing. Yep. Um, and uh, Bernard, based on his story, uh, it's great that his family could find comfort. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to share a little bit that we, we, need to, we need to have higher expectations from the people that we pay to do certain things mm -hmm. because there's no consequence. There's no consequence to a system where, uh, for whatever reasons, lacking resources, lacking of will, lacking of integrity, of no whatever, but to, to get to do their jobs. You know, um, yeah. this young lady was talking about, about persons that, that have the greater ideals of development. Yeah. We can seriously ask ourselves that, that question, who are those in leadership that have Belize's national development interests yeah. mm -hmm. versus their personal mm -hmm. interests? You know, yeah. I personally, I haven't seen that in, 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 in a very real way. And the evidence that we see in the social, in, in our country speaks to that. Yeah. There is little interest in national development. There is need for a <coughs> social revolution like that in the 50s. We need another little group of people who are ready to challenge. This time it's not about independence or government, things mm -hmm. like that. This is about really curbing, stemming, cutting down the social decay we are in. Yeah. And this speaks to what they are saying, people of integrity, but people that really want to bring that change. We need to. I love Bernard and how they managed to deal mm -hmm. with such a family crisis. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I have that fortitude to mm -hmm. do the same. Mm -hmm. But I need to be angry at why aren't our systems better? Why aren't we producing more? Yeah. You know, we, we, we have all these uh, big salaries or so, and I'm talking about people in leadership. But if they were doing a good job, things would be better. We'd have higher convictions better investigation, investigative capacities, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. Yeah. It's the results that count. Yeah. I always tell myself, and I, uh, you know, I, I looked at the, the, I have been in social work all my life. Mm -hmm. Social welfare, you know, where people need help, need groceries. And I, you know, you hear about these pro-poor programs. Yeah. And I have started to believe that we love the poor so much that we make it our business to have more of them every year. Yeah. <laughs> Think about what uh, the investments have not worked. Mm -hmm. it, we need Has to grapple with down, the objective. Yeah. Yes. If you love the poor, we need to be working at making less of them. Mm -hmm. this, the data is clear, and to our shame, it, you know, we need to question and rethink where are the investments uh, happening. I we need to invest in young people new blood i would love for yeah. offering early re early mm -hmm. early retirement for the older heads to move away the tainted people mexico did this some 20 or so years ago in the in trying to yeah. bring change other countries have done so because the if cartels i'm not mistaken right all the yeah. so you 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 give upward mobility yeah. right now i come from a system at ub um and you know there is a struggle people retiring uh, you know and I, and I have love for older persons don't get me wrong but I also believe in new blood. Mm -hmm. I, I can see myself phasing out. I'm not hanging on to, 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 to no hook on the sky. Yeah. I have played my part. I need to roll out. And hopefully young, new people yeah. will come to, yeah. mm -hmm. to get into elected office. Uh, and we need to, why aren't better people running for elected office? You ask yourself a simple question like that. Why is it? The reality is we don't have politicians in any high esteem. Mm -hmm. Because if that was something that appealed to 
more people would be getting and in. Then you have people with more integrity entering I the system. But I, I appreciate your candor, and I think that that is one of the things that we, we didn't really put into perspective. Because whether it is more or less murders for one year, there's one thing that, is that we can clearly see. And that's that people, especially in the city, are living without a sense of security. They feel Actually. fearful. They're like a corner dog. Yeah. You know, you just don't know what's going to come at you. And so you live with that type of fear. Whether or not it's real or just perceived. One of the things that happened over the past couple of years, and I always remember, I think it's one of the pivotal points in my time in the media, where Iyanin Nunez was killed in her bed, shot while sleeping. And I thought, man, this is the low. You know, people talk about hitting the rock bottom. And I said, I remember going to the funeral. There was a huge outcry in Belize. People were mad. And I have to tell you, I really thought that was going to be a turning point. I was young and optimistic. And I still <laughs> am young. The optimism here and there sometimes. But the point is this. Let's just look at last year. How many babies were killed yeah. in their sleep? How many times we've done stories with children talking about locking up in their house at 4 p.m. in the evening Big time. because they can't move around after that hour because they're fearful of being killed. You see, very importantly, what we have missed, and I believe um, a colleague here said it, we have persons in position who aren't executing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And not to call out any member of the police department, but when there were a specific person running the GSU, there were different types of behavior mm -hmm. with the members, the so-called gang members. And when there was a riff and shift, you know, we start to see some glamorizing and rising of gang members. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are brothers, they are family, they are fathers, but guess what? Your behavior is not accepted. Mm -hmm. And if our police department are the ones to provide protection, then they must execute in a way that, guess what? You all will be safe. When we have this person in possession, that means that is a person we will proceed with convicting to deter them and to perhaps send a message. But there's a lot side to this now because some of the high-handedness have caused a spur of human rights mm -hmm. and all that, which is, is understood because we've seen some of the incidents with the police Abuses. using uh, mm -hmm. brutality. Mm -hmm. but the fact of the matter is we are primarily dependent on the police. Mm -hmm. And so we must place emphasis on them. Mm -hmm. And when we place emphasis on them, we must ensure that they have the resources, mm -hmm. they have the mechanism to execute and execute beyond our expectation. Mm -hmm. There are so many things I can tell you that we can do, that the police department can do to assist with the crime. But guess what? They operate on perhaps instructions on discretion and likes i can tell you this if we are to gauge ourselves with our current policing system i hate to say it but perhaps in the next 10 20 years everybody will take protection at their own selves Mm -hmm. Do we want that? No, mm -hmm. that's chaos. We're supposed to be able to call on the phone for the police. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be able to cooperate with the police. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if, if we mm -hmm. don't get that support, if we don't get that security. I have my friend, Shelley. Shelley was killed some six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. She witnessed a murder. She yelled at the guy who was shooting the other. And before the case was called up, Shelley was good. shot mm -hmm. point blank in oh her chest. Mm -hmm. She had her statement, you see? Mm -hmm. And when we reflect at those situations, we go back into our bubble 
and say, you know what, we need to live for our families, mm -hmm. we need to live for ourselves. So there's not much cooperation with the police because I can tell you this, street information is almost more credible mm -hmm. or more balanced than police information because it's from the street. These things are happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and we as a society, we have not taken into account what is our role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to help the police as well. And I want to use that as our closing point for today because this is a conversation for society. I think yeah. this is there are people tuning in who just want to hear different thoughts on, on an issue that we've been struggling with for quite some time. Um, we'll start with the students and then we can close with you for a minute because I think one of the things you've both clearly said is that entering into your program, you had your own mental shift that took place. Yeah. And if you could leave a thought or a message or even a question to the wider society, how we can all move towards seeing ourselves as a part of the solution, mm -hmm. what would that be? Well, for me, I've always believed that it all starts with oneself. How are you making a difference in your community? It doesn't have to be monetary. It starts with yourself and what good do you do? What type of person are you? How do you influence the people around you? So for the people watching at home, I would say just start with yourself. Be, try your best to be a good person and leave a good imprint on society and that's all that I have to say. How about you, Bernard? <laughs> I would ricochet exactly what you yeah. said, but I would add this as well. We need to support our systems. Regardless of how we mm -hmm. may feel about it, we need to support it. We need to support the police. The police needs the help. And if we can't offer ourselves at least in that way, then we're not really helping the situation. We can't always blame politics, blame politicians. That's no use. Put ourselves in the position. I've been in there and I know what it takes. Mm -hmm. And so I would gladly tell the public, support your community. Know what to tolerate from your loved ones. You know, know how you want to interact with the police. Help them as much as you can. But, but at the end of the day, mm. crime is all of our business. But there has to be some type of communication between ordinary citizens and the police because exactly. the police are supposed to trust them they're supposed to be the ones that are that are, that are supposed to protect you and in the incident that happened recently with the police officers and the police brutality that occurred how are we as citizens supposed to trust mm -hmm. the people that are supposed to protect yeah. us so that's another issue that f uh, falls all under the crime yeah. situation so crime is such, like you said, a multifaceted problem. And there is so many issues that are intertwined with each other that just build it up. It just becomes yeah. bigger and bigger and bigger. And how, as a community, as a people, do we make an effort to alleviate this issue? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Marlene, thank you. It was great to be here with these young persons. I think it, it was a good start for this year that, you know, um, new people will be coming in into play. Um, I, I think honestly that we need to really take stock, take a sober look at the state of our country, at the levels of mm -hmm. crime that we have. And I, and I want to, for more people to become engaged, to become angry and to expect better. I think if our expectations continue to be so low, the lowest that they have ever been, that's how people will, will, will produce and, 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 and deliver. The people that we have, that we pay very well to, to provide the basic services, um, the levels of leadership and policy and, and these kinds of things have are really gotten away with, 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 with big salaries and, and we're getting peanuts for our investment. I think we have to hold them to task and, and demand more from them. You know, and I would love to see young people like Bernard and this young woman um, take the reins and to, and to lead us into, 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 into the future because the reins must change. We are embattled. We are in a no-win situation. It looks like to me 
um, but we need to become more engaged and more angry um, and, and expect better from yeah. Well, everyone. thank you very much for being a part of this conversation this morning, and uh, hopefully we can have more as the year progresses as well. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Thank we're gonna you. go. We're gonna go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're shifting gears. We're gonna be talking to uh, representatives of the Belize Fishermen Co uh, Cooperation Association, and we're gonna be talking about the use of gill nets. That's coming up after the break. So stay tuned.